This tutorial explains how to access and use data from an API in the R programming language. This tutorial was created in collaboration with Kirby White, who is a researcher at the Seattle Pacific University. Kirby is an absolute expert when it comes to topics such as machine learning, text analysis, and databasing. And in this tutorial, he will show you an example of a shiny dashboard that he has created based on an API himself. So without too much talk, let's dive into the example. Hello, my name is Kirby White, and I want to spend a few minutes with you doing a tutorial on how to use APIs in R. If you're not familiar with them, APIs are a great way of accessing information directly through the R interface instead of needing to download files and then import it into R and do a whole bunch of other cleaning. You can just request data using an API and bring it directly into an R object, and that's what I want to talk about today. So let me switch gears and we will go ahead and take a look at an example of how APIs can be used, uh, and then we'll get into the code about how to actually implement it. So this is a shiny web app that I built in R and uh, its purpose is to compare the uh, vehicle emissions for two different vehicles. And the way that you interact with it is you first add a vehicle by selecting a year. So I used to, to drive a 2009 Pontiac Vibe and it had this particular trim. This was the exact type of car that I drove and these drop down lists were all populated with APIs. So when I changed the year, it affected which vehicle manufacturers showed up in this list. And then as I selected a manufacturer, that changed the list of models that showed up so that only the vehicles in this list were relevant to this manufacturer. And now I'm going to click save the vehicle as vehicle A. And it has now taken the information about that vehicle, its year, make, model, and trim information, and asked the United States Environmental Protection Agency for miles per gallon and emissions information about that vehicle. And it has stored it in a data frame that is displayed here. And so here you can see this is the information that I uh, that I asked for, 2009 Pontiac Vibe. And it looked up this EPA ID 25302 and used that in an API to ask for all of this other information that's down here. And so this is an example of what you can do with an API and integrate it into an R Shiny app or use it for other data analytics and data science work. I'm gonna stop uh, showing you this web app at this point. You're welcome to check it out and, and see the other features by using this uh, hyperlink here, which will also be linked in the video. And now I wanna switch and do a tutorial about how I, how I got some of this information with an API. And the API that I'm using comes from fueleconomy.gov. Now this is a website set up by the United States government and it's, uh, purpose, the purpose of this web page is to make their data available to users through an API interface. And very often when you're working with an API, they will have documentation about how to make an API request, how to structure the URL to request data from the server, and also how to request what type of information you get back in response to the API call. And that's probably confusing at this point, and that's what I'm gonna uncover in the rest of this video. But let's start by taking a look at an API call. So here on the fueleconomy.gov uh, website, when you go to the web services section of it, they have a few examples. The basic data services are to look up a specific uh, vehicle ID number, um, and you'll get a you know the records for that vehicle or you can look up the uh, fuel prices that are currently used. You can get a summary of miles per gallon data. They have a bunch of different um, data sets that you can make a request to with an API. And if we click on one of these, I'll just click on this fuel prices one for now. I'll open it in a new tab. And this is a URL, fueleconomy.gov slash WS slash REST slash fuel prices. Now WS stands for web services and REST is a type of API. 
and then fuel prices is the request that we made. So an API ultimately is just navigating to a URL or opening a URL. And this is the data set that was returned in response to the API request. Sometimes this is called an API call. So we called this API and got this in response. Now what I want to do is go through this again, but in R and show you how to, to um, access this data and information directly in R. So uh, here I am in R Studio and I'm going to be uh, walking through the code to get that fuel prices information. The two packages that I'm going to be using are HTTR and JSON Lite or JSON Lite. So if you don't have those installed, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to first turn them on or load them so that we can use them. And actually, I'm going to clear out my environment uh, from my testing and we'll start from scratch. So we'll, yes, we will clear that. And this first example is the fuel prices one. Now an API call is essentially just a URL. And usually there's a base URL, something that every API request is gonna involve. And so I'm gonna store that in something called base URL, and that is www.fueleconomy.gov slash ws slash rest. And that portion of the URL is gonna be involved in everything that we do from this API. And now we wanna add uh, an additional portion to that, that um, URL which in this case is really simple, it's just fuel prices. But I'm putting these in two parts right now because later on as you get to more advanced parts of an API, you'll wanna be combining different pieces of text together to create the URL. And so I'm gonna join those two together, base URL and info URL into something called full URL. And now you can see that this is the full URL that we would use um, where if we try to navigate to this website, we will get a data set back in response. Now we don't have to use our browser for this, we can do it in R. And so the HTTR package has a function called the get, where if we give the get function the URL that we just created called full URL, it is gonna go ahead and, and try to navigate to that website and store the response in an R object that you can see over here and is called API call. Now it's a list. And so I'm gonna take a look at this real quick. And you should be familiar with lists to use APIs in R because it's, it, a list is essentially several objects of data in the same place. And it's got multiple components to it. So there, here's the URL that we called. This status code is very important and we'll cover that in a second. And then there's a lot of other information that we don't really care about. But what we need to do is take this object and convert it into something that's usable. So we'll cover that in a moment, but the first thing that I wanna show you is this status code. Every API, when you make a request, returns a response. Now, just by convention, the status code of 200 means that it was a successful response. That is, the server that, that received the API call knew what you were asking for and was able to find data and has, has sent it back to you successfully. So if you don't have a status code of 200, something has gone wrong and you probably need to adjust your API URL. The second piece that I wanna look at in here is this um, element of the list called content. Now this is right now not readable to us. We don't understand what this is, but this is hexadecimal formatting for uh, raw bytes of information. So this is, is the data that we're looking for, but it's not readable to us yet. I'm gonna go ahead and close that and then show you how to convert that information into something that we can use. In the base uh, package of R, which isn't something you need to install or load, it just is automatically there, there's a function called raw to character. And so what we wanna do is pass that piece of the API response, the content element, into that function and store it in something called API character. And if we take a look at that, it is closer to something readable. In fact, you can see CNG, 219, diesel, 359. So you and I can read this and start to make some sense of it, but it still is not usable yet. 
But I want you to notice that it's really similar to what we see here on the web page when we open the example URL, CNG 219, diesel 359, so on and so forth. And so hopefully you can start to see that we're getting closer to useful information. Now this is currently in XML formatting. And like I said, XML and JSON are the two most likely formats for you to, to receive data from an API in. And so what we can use is the function from the JSON Lite package called from JSON. And what we're gonna do is pass this API character uh, object into it. And we're gonna use the flatten argument to let it know that if it finds a data frame to convert that information into a data frame. We're going to go ahead and run that line of code and now we will take a look at it and we can see that now we have an object that we can make references to in R. So if I open up API JSON and want to look at a particular element to it, I can retrieve the, the uh, diesel fuel prices, which is 359. Now at this point, you should be familiar enough in R to know how to take this and continue using it in your line of work. You could convert this to uh, numeric data or do something else with it. But this is as far as I wanna go in this example to demonstrate how to make, uh, how to make a, a, an API call and convert it to something usable in R. This is a really simple example. So I wanna go through a second example to show you how a little bit more of a complex call might work with an API. I'm gonna go ahead and clear out my environment again so that we're working with fresh objects. And I'm going to build the base URL and I'm going to actually cause there to be a problem this time. So I've got my base URL and my info URL and I'm gonna put that together in full URL and I'm gonna make the API call and I wanna show you why it's important to check the response. So now that we've stored the API call in an object, I'm gonna say, what was the status code? And it's not 200. Now this is a problematic status code. This means that something has gone wrong with our API and I'm probably not gonna be able to convert it into a format that I want and is usable. That cues me to go back and look at my uh, parameters, the information that I put together into my URL, and I realized that I have a redundancy. I have this uh, rest backslash piece of the text in here twice. And so I'm gonna get rid of that, update my info URL object, and then rebuild full URL, and rerun the API call. And now when we check the status code again, we do in fact get 200, meaning this was a successful, we got a successful response from the API. So let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna take one more look at the content element of the API object. And you can see this is still, once again, this is the raw hexadecimal uh, bytes information that we can't use. And so we wanna convert that to something that is usable. I'm gonna go ahead and put that together in API character again, and uh, use the from JSON function to convert that into something. And before we store it in a data frame, let's go ahead and take a look at it one more time. And so we can see that the list API JSON has only one element in it, and it's called menu item. And so if I were to open up the list and select an element of the list, menu item, and run that, we can see that there is a data frame embedded into the list. And so at this point, it's very simple to extract that data frame and store it as a data frame object by simply referring to that element of the list. And so now I'm gonna create a new object called DF for data frame, and I'm gonna store in it the menu item element of the list. And now we have DF as a data frame that I can work with like anything else that I've used in R. Now let me go back and just touch on this URL for a minute. Um, this URL here is very different than the one we used in example one. And you'll have to read the documentation for the API that you're using to understand how to build the right URL for you. 
It's not uncommon for APIs to require an authorization token and for you to register an account with the API so that they know who's making requests and how often, and that's so that they can monitor their own costs uh, as they're delivering data over the internet. I picked uh, the fueleconomy.gov example for this tutorial specifically because it does not require an authorization token, and you should be able to cut and paste the code from this tutorial and use it right away in R. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope you learned something from it and I'm excited to work with you again in the future. Bye-bye. This tutorial has explained how to create a shiny dashboard based on an API in R. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out the Statistics Globe homepage on which Kirby White has created another tutorial where he's using a different API in R. I'll put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can check it out there. And furthermore, I will put a link to the profile of Kirby White into the description of the video in case you want to read more about his background and his other projects. If you have liked this video, make sure to leave a comment below. And thanks again to Kirby for his contribution in this video. See you in the next video. Bye bye.